Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of our tutorial on how to write your very first Salesforce trigger from start to finish. My name is David Liu. I created the site sfdc99.com. Um, if you like these tutorials, definitely check out my site. There's tons more content there for people who are absolutely new to Salesforce Apex programming. Also, follow me at dvdkliu at Twitter um, for all the latest updates. Now, let's take a look at what we did in part one. Um, here we completed a trigger on the user object that says before user is created, for every user that's being created, check the allow forecasting checkbox. Now, it's great that we have this written in our developer edition. You might have it written in your sandbox org and you might want to deploy it to production. Now, before you deploy it to production, Salesforce requires you to write a test class. What a test class is, is basically code that makes sure your trigger doesn't break, right? Because Salesforce wants to make sure that your trigger doesn't break the cloud. Now, the way that Salesforce knows that your trigger works is if our test class runs at least 75% of the lines of code in our trigger. So how do we do that? Well, we basically have a trigger on the user object that creates a user, then runs these lines of code. So if in our test class we create a user, then we'll indirectly trigger this trigger. So let's do that. How we do this is we'll go to develop, go to Apex classes, we'll hit new, and we can start coding. Public class test force forecasting A static test method void insert user. Now this all might look like mumbo jumbo to you and that's fine because you don't have to worry about this at all. Every test class will have all these exact lines of code. Um, the only thing that might be different is you can name them anything you want. So you can change these two things to absolutely anything you want. So yeah, don't worry about these lines of code. Here's where it gets important. So user u equals new user. Then insert u. So we have lines here that's creating a new user. We could have changed these to anything we wanted. We could have said create a new account, new contact, a new opportunity, but we chose user because our trigger is on the user object. Here we created a variable for our user and we can name this anything we want to, but we just chose you. Now this line here, insert you, is the same thing as creating a user on salesforce.com and hitting the save button, right? It's creating a user. Um, but if we insert it right now, we're going to run into an error because there are all these required fields we need to fill out. So let's fill out those required fields in our code. So you don't first name equals David. That's me. Equals Lou. What else was there? U dot email equals duty. This is my actual email address. You can shoot me an email. I am more than happy to respond. DC99 U dot username equals eat sleep breathe salesforce gmail.com. Cool. Now, one thing to note here is that we are using the API names of fields, right? Just like if you're writing a workflow or formula formula field, you're going to use API names. Now, the way to know the API names is if you go to the user setup page, um, on the left-hand side, you're going to see the literal field labels that you see on the page layout, and in the middle, you're going to see the API names. So make sure you use these API names. Now, also on the user object, there are all these things in the background that we have to fill out. For example, what time zone is the user in? Don't worry about these lines of code. Um, they just have to be done on the user object. When you're using any other object, you don't have to worry about these at all. Uh, it's just something unique to the user object. Again, don't worry about these at all. U dot email encoding key tf.8 and u dot language locale key equals n.us. 
do not worry about these four lines of code. All right, let's hit save. All right, it worked. So after you write your test class, uh, to find out if it worked, you hit the run test button. Thanks. Insert failed. Required field missing. Oh, profile ID. Yes. We have to fill out the profile. So back to our test class. U dot profile ID equals and I'm going to give it the system admin profile. So I'm just going to go to profiles, system admin, and copy this. Cool. So now our user has a profile ID. I'm going to save it and I'm going to hit run test again. Let's see what happens. Come on, baby. It's running, it's running, Salesforce is calculating the lines of code, and it passed. Great. So we know our trigger is not broken. Now let's see what how many lines of code that we covered. Going to develop triggers. Um, here, we covered 100% of the lines of code here. Perfect. Great job, guys. Um, next step. To deploy this into Salesforce, you're going to need to create what's called a change set. This part is all very easy. Um, I actually can't show you here on my video because I'm in a developer org. You can only do this in a sandbox of a paid Salesforce. But what you want to do is go to sfdc99.com, go to Beginner Tutorials, click on How to Deploy Your Code from Sandbox to Production, and it'll have all the steps you need to do. It's very simple, I promise you. The hardest part was creating the test class, guys. Congratulations, you've written your first Apex trigger, you've written your first test class, and you are able to deploy it in production. You guys are on the way to becoming a Salesforce developer. Next up, I'll have more videos on how to do more advanced things in Apex for people who are still brand new to coding. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and talk to you guys soon.